Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Caroline and I make sewing tutorials and patterns to help you along your sewing journey. Today's video is a sewing vlog. I have noticed most of the things that I make are dresses and I end up not having a lot of tops to wear more casually. <laughs> So today I'm going to be making some cute tops from leftover fabrics that I already have in my stash. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish everything in one day, but I'll try. I live in Brazil, which is in the southern hemisphere, so summer is coming. And I know most of you guys that watch me are from the northern hemisphere, but I'll mix it up. There are some tutorials coming up that are more colder weather appropriate. Oh, but I really want to make some fresh clothes for summer, but I really want to make some fresh Tu vai me deixar falar ou não vai, cara? Não tô falando contigo. But I do want to make some fresh clothes for summer. So today I plan on making three different tops. The first one is a top version of the Amy Bice cut dress. I'll just shorten the skirt pattern to make it a top. And I wanted to use this lilac fabric right here. This is the only one that's not actually a scrap, but it's been here on my stash for so long that I can kind of consider it leftover already. And I'm not sure how this will work because this is so thin and delicate, but at the same time, it's a bit on the stiffer side. So it might not turn out the way I'm expecting because I usually use really flowy fabrics for the Amy Bice cut dress. This is my view right now. <laughs> the second one I plan on making is actually a style I have already made here on this channel before. If you want to see the entire pattern making process for that, I'm going to leave the link in the description. It was one of the first videos that I made here, but I'm currently working on releasing it as a PDF pattern, so I have to test it out again. So this top will have two versions, a button front and a tie. I'm not sure which one I'm going to make today, maybe both if I have enough time. And for the fabric, I'm going to use this green linen blend here that I used a few years ago to make a dress. <laughs> But it didn't work out so i kept it to reuse it eventually and the time has finally come and for the third top i want to make a straight cut top with thick tie-in straps a really reformation style silhouette and for the fabric i'll use this viscose here that i use to make an amy bice cut dress it's really scrappy and really leftoverish, but i think i have enough to cut it i mean the lining would definitely have to be from something else but it's fine. Okay, so now let's get started because there's a lot to be done. If you have ever wondered how I keep my patterns organized, this is how. So I just shortened the skirt for the back and the front. And instead of cutting two of each, I'm gonna cut four because the fabric is really thin, so I wanna make it lined. And I'm gonna cut one of each skirt as well. So I sew the double pattern pieces for the bodice together. I sew them really close to the edge, so they would kind of become one piece. And then I sew them at the shoulders. And I sew the basing stitch at the bottom so I could gather it. Now I'll separate the threads and pull it. And I gathered it until it was around the same size as the top of the skirt. But I forgot to finish the neckline, so I have to do that before. I'll finish it with bias tape. And I'll just place it on the neckline on both sides. Stitch it here close to the edge. Now I'll trim the seam. And now I'm just going to fold it inside like this. And now I'm just going to stitch it here so I can keep the seam inside. And now we're ready to sew it to the skirt. And after I attach the back skirt, I place the front and back right sides together and I sew it at the sides. And now all there's left to do is finish the armhole just like we did for the neckline and hem the bottom. So 
So I changed the order of things a little bit. I decided to make the flower one first. It was a real challenge to be able to cut all of the pieces. I was pretty sure I wouldn't have enough, but I made it. The pattern for this one is the same one that I used to make the corset polka dot dress. It might seem a little bit challenging, but I promise you it's not. In that video, I go really step by step on how to make the pattern, so I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out if you want. The only alteration that I made was the neckline. I lowered a little bit, like three fingers, and I drew a straight line to the side because the original one was a little bit more oval. And I also made them a little bit longer than the original one because I wanted them to hit the middle of my hips. But those are the pattern pieces. The front and the back. And I'm gonna cut one of this and fold, two of this, one of this and fold, and two of this. And I made the center back panel wider because I don't want to have to use any zippers or buttons to get in or out. I extended four fingers. So I'll just use elastic thread and shear the entire center back panel, which takes a little bit of time, but I like it because it makes it tight fitting, but not uncomfortable. So if you're bloated or if you eat a little bit more, you can still wear it and be fine. And I almost didn't have enough fabric for the straps. This is all I have left. But they're just rectangles, so you just have to cut long rectangles of fabric and sew them right sides together, turn them right sides out, iron them, and they're ready. And now I'll just sew all of the panel pieces. I have to sew the center front to the side front and then the side backs to the side front. And I'll do that for the lining and for the fashion fabric. And then I'm gonna come back to show you the next steps. Welcome back. It's day two now. It's been a couple of days actually. My birthday has passed, which means I am 25 years old now. I still don't feel like I'm 25. And I do not remember where I stopped. I definitely should have watched the footage before starting filming today, but I didn't. I don't really know if I have already said that, but I have sewn all of the outside layers and the lining together. And now what I mainly have to do is shear the center back panel. I love how shearing looks, but I don't really like doing it. <laughs> I'm going to start by filling out three bobbins that I have because there's nothing wrong than being in the middle of a panel. Your bobbin runs out of thread and then you have to stop and fill the entire bobbin again. So I'm gonna leave them all ready. I usually do this by hand, but I have seen people do that the way you normally thread your bobbins. I have never really done that. It probably works but I'm just gonna go the old-fashioned way. Well, it's actually been a couple of days since I filmed the first part. My birthday has already passed. It was yesterday, which is a bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. I was born on October 30 at midnight, but actually I was born during Halloween because I was born from October 30 to October 31st because midnight sharp, instead of being like the last minute of October 30 is actually the first minute of October 31st but the person who like the I don't know the nurse or the person who made my birth certificate wrote it October 30 so I have celebrated my entire life October 30 but it's actually October 31st which means my birthday is during Halloween and usually I do celebrate it but my birthday is a very sensitive time for me I don't know if any of you guys go through the same thing but it's usually a moment where I'm really emotional and I feel kind of sad that I'm getting old. One, it's done. And I really wanted to do some Halloween content this year because even though it's not something that's really popular to celebrate here in Brazil, it's so fun. But every time that I would stop and think, what are you going to do for Halloween this year for your channel? I just kept thinking, oh, Halloween is my birthday. Let's think about this later. Not right now. And I kept postponing it and then eventually it was too late and I didn't do anything and now I just regret not doing anything because I was actually fine during my birthday like for the first time I was actually fine and seeing everyone celebrate Halloween and dressing up in so many fun costumes I kind of feel like I was missing out I <laughs> know I'm rambling just way too much the second one is done I think I have more than enough for the center back panel and I'm sorry in advance for all the background noise that you might hear because usually when I film, I close the windows, but it's so hot today. 
it's starting to get really hot already and I don't know if I'll be able to keep doing that without dying. Now let's go to Shiri. I already finished the top, I hemmed it twice. And I always recommend you testing the stitching before doing it on your actual fabric because maybe it's gonna be too loose. I have also already done that. And I'm just going to sew the many, many rolls of stitching that I need. I'm gonna make the stitching really close to each other. The closer to each other you make the stitching, the tighter it's going to be. And the further away you put the rolls, the looser it's going to be because there will be less elastic tensioning it. So that's actually up to you, but I'm gonna do them less than one centimeter away from each other, like 0.8, I think. And I always backstitch in the beginning and at the end of sewing, because otherwise the elastic thread is going to escape. Something else that alters how tight the shearing will be is how thick your fabric is. The thicker the fabric, the harder it is for the elastic to tension it. So maybe that's why sometimes you calculate how much you need and it works, but then you use a different fabric and maybe it's thicker and then it's too loose on you. It's because the elastic has more trouble tensioning everything. So maybe the thicker fabric that you use, closer the rolls you need to make. But that's something that you only really figure out once testing everything. Well, five hours later, it's done. And I don't know if I have already showed you the other day, but I have already finished doing the straps as well. Now let's assemble the top. I'll start by placing the outside layer. Oops, it's upside down. The fashion fabric and the lining right sides together. And the straps will come right here. So I'll sandwich them in the middle. And the back ones, I'm going to place them two fingers away from the center back. Now you just have to sew here at the top one centimeter away from the edge. And to avoid the lining peeking through later, I stitched the seam allowance to the lining. And now all you have to do is add the shearing panel, place the right sides together with the fashion fabric, and use the lining to cover it like this. I placed the sheared panel a little bit further away and now just stitch it here and now when you turn it inside out everything is kept inside now you just have to do the same thing to the other side place the right sides together and now you just cover it with the lining I tried it on that's why it's a bit wrinkly and the fit is good, so I'm just going to fold the edge of the straps inside and stitch. And I'll also hem the bottom, and it's done. Now it's time for the third top. I already printed the pattern pieces. I remade the pattern from scratch on my computer, so now I have to test if it's working or not. And to make the process a little bit faster, I already separated all the pattern pieces of the dress. I remember saying that I wasn't sure if I was gonna make the tie version or the ones with the buttons. Okay, I'm not finding the button. Wait a minute. I have no idea where I put the buttons. But it's the same as this one. I have another package that is closed, so I'm gonna use this one. Hopefully I find the other one because it had only four or five in it, so it would be perfect for this project. I'll be using these cream brown ones. I think they really match the color of the fabric. It gives a more rustic look. So now I'm gonna juggle all the pattern pieces around the scraps that I have, and I'm gonna show you what we can do next. I have cut all the pieces and I have also noticed that I forgot to add the grain line, so 
I have to add that to the pattern. I didn't cut a lining for the center back. I only cut on the fashion fabric because the first time that I made this, I used the method of fake shearing where you add elastic in the middle of the lining and the fashion fabric. But this time I want to test out how it would be like if I shear the back. So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to shear the center back panel. And after that, I'm going to sew all of those panels together. The center front to the side front, the side front to the side back. Um, the other time I made it a little bit differently. So I'm going to test this one out just to see which one is better. So this green fabric is a really thick, rustic looking linen blend. Remember what I said about shearing that the thinner the fabric, the easier it is to shear. I made the rolls of shearing way closer this time than I did on this one, but it doesn't stretch that much, like it didn't shrink as much as the other one. So I don't know if it's the best option to do shearing when you're using thicker fabrics. I will have to test it out. But now I'm just going to sew the outside layer to the lining. We'll end up having two pieces, the left and the right one, and then I'm gonna come back to show you what we have to do. I top stitched it all around. I only did it because my lining is a different color, but if you're using the same fabric, you probably don't need to do that. And here's the center back panel, center front, there we're gonna add the buttons. And now I'm going to connect to the shoulder line. Just fold the back inside, like you're hemming it. Now I'll take the front, now put it inside like this. And you just have to stitch it close. It ended up being a bit shorter because I hemmed it twice instead of using an overlocker and folding once. So I think I might make the bottom seam allowance a little bit wider. Now you see this line here, this mark here. Should have transferred it before. Now you fold this part here, right at the mark, and top stitch it on both sides. I had originally put four spaces for the buttons, but I think since it became shorter than it was supposed to. I think I'll only have space for three. And now I'm gonna use those three marks that I made to make the buttonholes. I'm not gonna show how to do it on camera, but if you want me to make a video, like a full tutorial on how to make buttonholes, let me know in the comments and I'll totally work on it. And I don't know if the microphone captured it, but there is a storm coming. That's why it suddenly became so dark, even though it's not late at all. So I'll probably not be able to film the result today. But I'm still gonna finish it right now, and I'll film the result when I can. Probably tomorrow. So a small little recap about the tops. Um, the first one, the Amy Bias Cut top. I think for that one, I would give a six out of 10. It's not that I didn't like it. It's more that um, I think the fabric choice was very unfortunate. I did think about it beforehand, but I decided to go for it anyways, because I just really love the color and the little embroidery flowers that they had in it. But because it's a little bit wrinkly, I feel like when I sewed the neckline, the fabric ended up stretching a little bit. And I only noticed that once I finished the entire top and I tried it on. If I put it on the right shoulder line, it's a bit weird at the end of the neckline, the end of the V-neck. For it not to be bulky and weird here, I have to pull it a little bit off the shoulders. And that has never happened to any of the other multiple versions that I made of the dress. So I do think the problem was actually the fabric. I would definitely make this again, but using fabrics that I'm more used to, like viscose, rayon, or a crepe that doesn't have any stretch to it. Now the second top, the floral one, honestly, I would give it 10 out of 10. It was my favorite out of the three that I made. I wouldn't change anything about the pattern at all. The only thing is that I had to make it a little bit shorter than what I wanted because I didn't have enough fabric, but overall that's fine. Especially if you consider the fact that those were real leftovers from another project that I had already finished. So if you use a little bit of girl math here, since I had already bought the fabric to make a dress and I made a dress out of it, this top was basically free. So that makes me like it even more. 
I love the silhouette, I love the style, everything. If you would like me to work on a pattern for that, let me know. Now the third top, the green one, mm, I think I would give it maybe an 8 out of 10. I do like the pattern and I do like how it fits. However, I think I was very unfortunate when I chose to make the lining with white fabric that didn't match the outside layer. I didn't have enough to cut the lining on the same fabric so I had to improvise. Going back, I wouldn't have used white because it keeps speaking through. Maybe I would have gone to a store and bought some matching color for the lining but now it's done. There's nothing I can do about it and I think it also ended up being a little bit too short which for me it's fine because I do wear really short tops like this during summer but since it's a pattern that I plan on releasing I think it should have been a little bit longer so I'm going to make the pattern a little bit longer and yeah that's it let me know in the comments which one of the three you like the most my ranking is definitely the flower one then the green one and then the lilac one and before I go, I wanted to let you guys know that the pattern for the House of CB inspired dress is almost ready. I've been working on it for so long now. <laughs> Since the video was released and you guys asked for it basically, but I have finished grading everything and I think it's pretty solid. Usually, before releasing a pattern, I make multiple sizes of it just to test the fit. But so far, the patterns that I have released are more simple, I would say. They're not as complicated as this one. This one in particular, I do not feel comfortable releasing before having multiple people and multiple body types testing it. It's a very time-consuming project, so I do not think I will have the time to make all of that by myself. So I'm thinking about, for the first time, asking for patent testers. I never felt really comfortable doing that before because I didn't think people would be interested in it, but maybe now that I have a little bit of a following here, I would find enough people that would be interested in helping me out. So if that's something that could potentially interest you, if you would like to receive the pattern beforehand to help me fix any issues that might show up, keep an eye out because as soon as everything is ready and it's almost ready, I'm going to release a link here on YouTube and on my Instagram as well. I'm really excited about this one because I have been working on it for quite a while and I do think you guys are going to love it because it's such a beautiful style. So yeah, this is it for today's video. I really hope you guys liked it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you guys next time as well. Bye!